Okay, we'll call them. Yeah, I just think that's something. Well, the words are planning already, y'all. Okay. I'm going to call them. Just turn around, please. Sure. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you to, uh, for today, Lord, and uh, we're thankful for all the blessings that you've given us. We ask that you be with this committee tonight as we discuss things relevant to the uh, community, Lord. Give us some clarity of thought on this. Help us to honor you with our discussion and our dialogue, and give us wisdom in the decisions that we have to make in the, in the uh, next couple minutes ahead. I ask this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. <coughs> okay, first order will be to approve the minutes of last week. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, first up, planning. <coughs> Man. Good evening, commissioners. Hey, Good evening. Good evening. First order of business is just to just discuss quickly the recorded plat available lot inventory. And it's something we've been provided every month for the last few years. Uh, you'll see that the most recent number we had now is 938 available lots. That's down a little bit from last month. Uh, we didn't really have, uh, we had one uh, smaller subdivision that was recorded, about five lots, that's reflected in this list. But um, as far as the number of permits, there were about, there were quite a few, and David will talk about that a little later, but there were quite a few building permits issued this last month. So it did make the lot inventory go down. Uh, I printed out a little chart just to kind of show you kind of a, how the available lot inventory has changed. Of course, we started doing this back in 2004. We really started tracking it uh, historically by year, comparing it just within the last uh, four or five years or so. But you'll see from January 2009, you can kind of see the, the maximum there, as high as it gotten that we had recorded was about July or so, 2009. Of course, that was right in the middle of the economic downturn there. Uh, that was over 1,600, close to 1,700 lots that we had available. But you can see since that time, it's kind of trended, kind of started going down and went back up a little bit in 2010. But since 2010, for the most part, it is trending down. Uh, so that just thought that'd be something for you to, to, to kind of give you an idea of what our lot inventory has looked like over the last few years. So if there's no questions about that, we'll just go ahead and jump right into the zoning report. Uh, we've got three zoning requests that you'll be considering at your meeting last uh, next week, excuse me, uh, none of which really caused any uh, real public opposition that we're aware of. Uh, there was really us as few people here to speak on any of these items. Uh, the first one is for four pieces of property located along Franklin Road. Uh, Mr. Farley, this is in uh, your mm -hmm. district. Uh, they came to us, the, the applicant came to us with really just one of the properties and was wanting to zone it to office professional. It's in an area that uh, there's property right around it. Over the last few years, we've seen a number of rezonings and uh, the zoning of that property in that area is also office professional. So basically what I asked them to do was, well, if you know this one property owner is interested, why don't you ask the surrounding property owner to see if maybe they're interested too. Mm -hmm. We kind of see a progression uh, going down Franklin Road. And so they did, and uh, they found uh, that they're the three property owners right in that area were also interested in, in zoning their property for office professional. Uh, at the public hearing, there was some concern uh, brought up about the drainage of the property. If any development were to occur, possibly uh, looking at the drainage, which I assured them is something that we do, uh, do absolutely. Uh, also, there was some concern about maybe zoning all four of them at one time as opposed to just kind of taking them one at a time. Uh, my opinion as planning director, what I shared to the uh, planning commission was that I felt it was better planning practice to zone them all at once as opposed to just kind of piecemealing it. Uh, so, but ultimately, after some discussion, it was recommended to approve the application by unanimous vote. Uh, the second is by a gentleman named Kevin Lee. Uh, the property is located along Florence Road, 5110. It's located immediately adjacent to the Roselawn Cemetery. It's a pretty large track, although they're not looking to zone the entire parcel. The whole parcel is about 129 acres. They're looking to zone about 113 acres of it. Uh, the type of of activity they're wanting to do on the property is what he calls, let me just make sure I read the reference here that way, read it correctly, a residential treatment facility for persons in recovery from an addiction to use of substances or other types of additions, what they would call addi addictions, excuse me, like process addictions, eating disorders, those kind of things that would serve as well. Uh, he has a lot of information in here. He gave a very thorough presentation at the Planning Commission, which he does plan on doing again at the Board of Commissioners for your uh, information. Uh, they had a neighborhood meeting at the cemetery a couple weeks before the rezoning hearing, and it was very well attended. And most of the folks that I talked to were really pretty happy that this is what they were looking to do as opposed to a subdivision. They thought this would be a better option for that area. 
uh, staff's recommendation was that we thought this was a good location for this type of development. Uh, the way that they plan to do the development, most of the activity be toward the back end of the lot, you know, an office kind of toward the middle of the lot, most of the residential areas toward the rear of the, of the property. Uh, you would never see any of these from the road, and they're looking to do about 60 uh, residents on site. Uh, the applicant is aware that even if this is approved for an institutional zone, that they are going to have to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals for this type of use. So even if it is approved, they, they still have another step to go. Is it dormitory type buildings or is it uh, single family? It's dormitory. It's dormitory. dormitory style, yes, mm -hmm. One for men and one for women, if I remember right. And this is all voluntary yes, admissions? Yes, so that's correct. So there's no court ordered admissions for right. this facility? So. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, again, after some discussion from the Planning Commission, uh, this did pass by unanimous vote and approval as well. The third item is, it's a little unusual that this is coming before us. It's property along uh, Newcastle Road and Spantown Road. Our current zoning ordinance and map were uh, adopted in uh, 2012, but became effective in January of 2013. When the zoning map was created, and I'll just to kind of show, I'll just go ahead and refer you to this map that's in here. It's toward the back of the agenda. This is a map here that might help out for what we're talking about. We used on our mapping system what we thought was the current boundary between Rutherford County and Williamson County. As it turns out, uh, there's a piece of property along Newcastle Road that uh, the gentleman had called trying to do, he's looking to buy the property and do a home-based business on the property. He called Williamson County, and Williamson County said he was in Rutherford County. He called us. We thought it was in Williamson County. <laughs> so long story short, after much discussion, it appears that it really is Rutherford County and not Williamson. So after speaking with the assessor's office and looking at what the proper uh, boundary in that area is, what we're doing is basically just going back to zone the area that if we'd have known that's where the boundary was to begin with, we would have zoned it that way to begin with. Uh, we did notify the uh, owners that were going to be impacted by that. I heard from, I didn't hear from all of them, I did hear from a few of them. And after explaining what it was we were doing, there was really no question uh, or any problem with what was going on. This isn't going to impact their property as far as really any taxation. They're all taxed in Rutherford County anyway. Uh, this is not for new development. All we're doing is expanding the, the RM zone, which is our uh, three units per acre zone, to encompass the rest of the property, uh, to clarify that. That's really all we're doing. Uh, again, there were a couple people that had that spoke that really had more questions than anything, but uh, after the uh, discussion at the Planning Commission, they also recommended approval by unanimous vote. So I'll be happy to answer any questions. Anybody have any questions? Motion to approve the report for no questions, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. Motion seven approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Call your attention now to our budget. Uh, we'll be presenting two budgets tonight, one for planning and engineering, and then uh, Mr. Hill will be taking uh, the stormwater budget. Uh, of course, we've got three sheets in your, uh, on, well, I guess they're on your iPad. We didn't bring any other paper copies, so does everybody have that? Uh, oh, we're going to be looking at the, the, big, the main one right now, this one here. I think this is sheet low. Let's see. It should be the planning 101 worksheet. Yeah, right in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, kind of a quick overview of the budget. Uh, you'll see bottom line what we're looking at at, the, at literally the bottom line of the uh, of the budget. We are seeing a, just a small decrease in our budget, a little over six thousand uh, dollars. Most of the decreases you're seeing uh, under line item 101. Uh, you'll see that that amended request or the the request is going down fairly significantly. Uh, the reason for that is when uh, that's uh, the engineering position. Uh, it was originally budgeted at Mr. Corbett's salary, and of course the budget was already prepared when he decided he was going to retire. So they just left it that way. So the salary that you're seeing there accurately reflects what the, the new salary is. Yeah. So that's what you're seeing. I there. thought Eric was getting a cut to pay. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks that way, but no, I, that, that's not what's happening. Uh, you'll see some other significant de decreases in our in-service training, uh, in our data processing equipment, and, and Eric, if you wouldn't mind. Just and that's, that uh, last year, if you recall, we bought the um, uh, uh, AutoCAD software yeah. suite, and then we had to buy two computers to, to, run, it. to run it. And so that's this just kind of reflects the yeah. money we had to move around to get that, and that was just a one-time purchase. So. Mm -hmm. so we're back to what we would normally be looking at. 
right? So yeah, the seven thousand dollars we asked for in that line item has pretty much been static over the last several years. We haven't really changed. On that. the in-service training, it's eleven thousand dollar reduction. Yes, sir. What, what, what's that reason for? The way the way that works. Well, we bought the AutoCAD uh, software. OIT actually purchased the software, and we purchased the training. And there was a, okay. a three or four day training for our entire department and some of OIT also. And so that's where that. So that's came. why that's okay. Yeah. I think that all that money, I think, was actually in the last line item under 709 last year, and we actually transferred 11000 into the training, if I yeah, remember right. that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, as far as uh, some increases, uh, you'll see the largest increase really just deals with employee dependent insurance. That's the numbers we get directly from finance. There's not really a whole lot we can do about that. Uh, you'll see a little bit, too, in our dues and memberships. That, uh, in, in line item 320, that may be able to be reduced. Uh, most of the increase in that comes from our membership with the Nashville Metropolitan Planning Organization, MPO. Uh, they have uh, a set structure for the dues. They don't anticipate an increase this year, but they did say just on the safe side budget, you know, 15% maximum. Uh, from I actually have a meeting tomorrow with them, but I don't think that that's going to go up from all indications I've heard. So we might be able to even to budget that one down, but we just budgeted in there just in case. Uh, you'll see we have put a little bit extra money in there for postage, legal notices, things like that. We are seeing more activity in rezonings and board zoning appeal applications. Therefore, we need uh, you know more notice in the paper, more mail outs and signs and things like that. So that takes care of that. But overall, what you're again, what you're seeing is a, just a small decrease in our budget from last year, a little over six thousand dollars. Looks like a good budget, Mr. Chairman. Just, uh, I'll make a motion we approve his budget and send it to budget committee. Second. Motion made. Say, anybody got any questions on the budget? All in favor? Aye. Aye. The uh, stolen budget uh, that you guys have in front of you, uh, very similar to the uh, planning engineering budget. Uh, we've also reduced it uh, $8,581. Um, the biggest change in that is uh, personnel, just from uh, the engineer that is paid out of that, had been here for seven years, and our new engineers uh, in her first year. So, so that's the biggest change. Um, it, really, the only increases we had is uh, in other salaries for our inspector position, there's a $4,000 increase. That's because uh, last year when that position was created, it, was, it started in July, but we only budgeted enough money from August for the rest of the year because we knew it would take a month or so to get the person hired. So, uh, so that's basically to get his full salary for the year. Um, we increased communication by $400 just to handle, um, since, uh, since I've been county engineer, we're doing things a little bit differently over there and communicating more electronically and trying to do a better job of uh, record keeping and so just to be able to accommodate for everyone to have a smartphone basically so that we can communicate better. Uh, that accommodates that. And then uh, we increased $1,000 in gasoline just because we do have our inspector position and, um, and he's staying out and about a lot more and so, so uh, just to try to accommodate that. So everything else we tried to be uh, um, as, uh, as close as we could on it and reduce as much as possible. Anybody got any questions on his budget? Make a motion to approve the budget as presented. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Building Coach Department report for February. We issued a total of 164 building permits. Fees taken in was $750 for plan review, $52,011 for building permits, $5,820 for plumbing permits, and $555 for gas permits. Total taken in $59,136. On the back of that report, you see that our totals for this year, first two months, 81 single family dwellings, 305 building permits total. Our next page is our property maintenance inspections. 
We performed 87 in February under property maintenance standards, 41 inspections on BZA and conditional use uh, requests and signs. New cases for February was 10, closed cases were 19. Um, on your paper package, I'm not sure if it's on the iPad, um, I've included a total single family dwellings we've issued in the last six years. It kind of gives us the 2008 when our permits dropped to 385. 2010 was our slowest single family dwelling uh, construction. 321, we're back up to last year's total 556 single family dwellings. David, do we have, do we know what 2007 was prior to the drop in? 2007 was about, it was in 800. I'm, I didn't bring that with okay, me, I'm so sorry, but um, it was around 800, I think. Okay, I just wondered where we were at before it started. Our, and I'll tell you what I did, I, I took the last 25 years before last year from from 2000, and, I'm sorry, from 1988 to 2012, our 25-year average for single families mm -hmm. is 700. 700. So that last 25 years gives us an average of uh, 700 new homes a year. So that's a that's a, kind of where we were on all of our ups and downs right. through those 25 years. So we're basically 150 about, oh, down from our average. So that's, right. that's, that's pretty good. We're the economy is starting really to pick good. up. Yeah, we've, I've talked to other jurisdictions that's not doing so well as, as Rutherford County, that's for sure, right. Yeah, across the state. Uh, 81 single families this year, in the first two months. The next report is our um, total permits issue. As you can see, in 2008, we had 2,237. Our slowest year for total permits was 2011 at 1,806. We're back up to uh, 2,397 total permits issued last year. 141 total permits issued so far the first two months of this year. Our development tax collections is the next report. Building Coach Department took in $449,250. The Planning Department for lots took in $39,000 for a total of $488,250. Our cumulative total to the right top corner, $2,754,000 collected for this year's uh, budget year total. Our collections on our jurisdictions below that, uh, Murfreesboro City was our highest collected uh, jurisdiction, 404,000. Um, 241 apartments on Memorial Boulevard was uh, the biggest single collection in, in Murfreesboro. And that's my monthly report, Mr. Chairman. I also have my budget. Second. Mr. Bade, second approval report. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Um, the budget, I, I could um, go over it line item by line item, but I will choose the ones that we have. Uh, changed and then let y'all uh, direct me after that. Um, our 307 line item under communication, we have added $200 to that. Uh, we went to the smartphone updates this year uh, for our building inspectors. It has really saved us time. They get their emails. We can email them their mm -hmm. inspections and clock in and out during their lunch hours. It's just been a, a, a great time saver uh, uh, for us on, on the telephones. I think we're going to clear this year with what we had in there. Uh, last year we appropriated 4800 and I think that's going to meet this year's uh, changes, but uh, we are asking for 5000 next year, so it's a total of 
200 more in that line item. Um, our line item 317, we are eliminating. We had data processing services, and uh, Brian with OIT, he's helped us out on data processing in the last few years, so uh, we're going to eliminate that uh, line item. It started out at $1,000, and we had to borrow a little bit to pay our copy machine off um, that we lacked a little bit last year, but uh, we're eliminating that $1,000 that was in 317. Uh, coming down to line item 435 in office supplies, we're increasing that $200. We've got some uh, increases that we're not showing yet this year in our in our expenditures, but uh, predict that we will uh, need need that amount of money. If you look back on 2012, 2013, we, we wound up with $4,997 spent for that office supply line item. So we're asking for $200 more than we had last year on that line item. Our 718 motor vehicles, we're not asking for a new vehicle this year. We will have that in capital outlay for next year. And our office equipment, 719, uh, was our copy machine last year, and we've not asked for any office equipment this year, this coming 14-15 uh, year. Our total uh, requested with salary and in increases in benefits, $852,063. That is $15,497 less than the last budget year. Any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Anybody got any questions? On the one out of 191, it says it's a Board of Adjustment and Appeals members, but it hadn't been budgeted previously, or was it? Well, it was it wasn't used in 2012 and 13. It it it, it was it was actually uh, budgeted for twelve hundred dollars the last several years, okay. and that's our board of adjustments and appeals for anyone that would like to appeal the decision of the building codes. Gotcha. Director. And that's okay. and that's a requirement that the state that requires for them to have their exemption. Yeah. So the money's there. Okay. We're just not using it. We're not even meeting. We haven't met in several years, even just for. You know, it's like ad hoc. When there's business, you meet. Yes, ma'am. Gotcha. Okay. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> it looks like a good budget. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to approve. Thank you. Second. A motion and a second to approve. Anybody have any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Appreciate it. Thanks, David. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan Bill. Charlie Williams. Good evening. How are y'all? Good evening. How are you doing? Let's start out with the, the landfill report. As you can see there on the front page, it, it's not been extremely busy, but the, the weather has not been extremely good either. On the landfill, uh, ask me to speak you to send y'all some information on tires. Yeah. The uh, state tire grant actually goes away at the end of June, and they will not renew that. Even if we our contract were to extend past June 30th, they would cancel our contract. The reason I want y'all to be aware of it is we're going to have to really figure out what we're going to do. Uh, we deal with somewhere between 230 to 300,000 tires a year. The way that the tire predisposal fee works is if you go buy a new set of tires, the dealer will charge you $1.35 per tire. The dealer keeps 10 cents, sends the rest of it to the Tennessee Department of Revenue. TDEC gets 25 cents, and then a dollar of it is appropriated for the grant. Now that the grant's going away, the same pricing structure goes up there. But we can only apply to get reimbursed a dollar per tire for all the new tires. So the state's not doing the 
grant, but we've still got to send the money to the state for them to distribute our money back to us. The tire dealers do, yes, sir. And then we we have to show the paperwork. Also, in the past, the, the state kept up with it. If you were a tire dealer, you're supposed to send that revenue into the state quarterly. It takes them about 45 days to do the paperwork, and then it would show up on a computer that you'd sent your money. They're not supporting that anymore. It's up to us to make sure that it gets done. And if you're the tire dealer and you're not sending your money, we have to contact the state that this tire dealer's not sending their money, then they'll go after the tire dealer. The grant, the way it's worked in the past, has been pretty close for Rutherford County. You know, it's not quite enough to cover everything. But there was money in there to do other than just a new tire disposal. We collect tires at Weekly Lane Convenience Center. We collect them at uh, Craner Road, Eagleville, and at the landfill. And it was no charge. And this new, the way the new thing is going to set up, start July 1, there will be no money coming from the state for those tires. Now, we get money from uh, tire places when they bring them up there, right? If you're a dealer, yes, sir. <coughs> If you're a used tire dealer or a new tire dealer, we've got some new tire dealers here in the county that, you know, they'll send in their money, and then when they, if they run out of money, uh, when we start doing the rebate stuff, contact them, Mr. Turner, you don't have enough money on how much you need. They'll just write a check instead of going through the stuff with the state. Uh, so our, our, our tire dealers are not going to be an issue for us, I don't think. But my concern is what, and what we need to discuss is what we're going to do with the residential tires. Yeah. Mike, if we looked at maybe buy more of them machines and choose them up and if you if they're priced in they're they're extremely expensive and they're a high maintenance item through this uh, information if we as rutherford county could prove and show paperwork wise and financially that it's cheaper for us to landfill the tires than it is to do the rebate or do the the, the what the grant money would be then we can do that but with our landfill issue at Middle Point and our landfill issue with, with our landfill, both of them closing in a short period of time, I don't think that's an option mm -hmm. for us. We don't need to try to fill up the landfill with we'll tires. We need to fix that purpose. Right. And then if you bury them, then they're not recycled. You know, so I, I think we still need to try to do the recycle effort. Can, like, like Jack was saying, can we, if we were to have that, can we, can we kind of have a byproduct of mulching it Per se, and then turn around, we could sell that as, as some kind of mulch because there's mulch mm -hmm. that people can buy for mm -hmm. plant, uh, rubber mulch or whatever, uh, you know, to offset some of that cost through that mechanism. Then, then, yes, we can do that to answer your question. Then we'd have to get into the marketing mode to try and try to find the markets exactly. to sell those to. And then, if you do something like that, then you can only store it for less than a year. And if it sits there for more than a year, and then TDEC's going to make you do something with it. Okay. Well, they out there. I mean, the tire. People, the, I mean, people to do the buy that mm -hmm. product. Uh, well, I see the the similar down similar to the shingle deal. You know, right. Them, them guys there mm -hmm. that come last month. The downside for us on tires mm -hmm. is there's only one vendor left. One vendor has bought up all the competition in the area, so our contract should expire or could expire early fall, I think it's sometime in August, and we have one more year. The way we bid that contract was one year contract with options, and there's one more optional year. I talked to the sales lady that, that we deal with on that. She understands government. She used to be the county mayor for Obine County. And I told her, I said, if that's something going to change, we need to look at you know what that dollar would be for, for budget purposes. She thinks that they're probably going to stick with the contract through that one more year. Right now we're charged $65 a ton for disposal. I asked her if that were to change, what would it change to? And she said, I don't see it going up more than 5 or $10 a ton. You know, so that's a whole lot cheaper than, than what some of the other counties experienced in the past. Uh, so what are, you know, and we passed, or y'all passed last year or so, you know, we can charge the tire dealers or whomever we need to take tires from the $65 a ton that we're currently paying. And the way that was written is if it goes up to 75 we don't have to come back through. It's written that we just charge whatever we have to pay. Uh, all we're looking at doing is, is breaking even on it. You know, we don't yeah. expect to try to, to turn any revenue or profit off of it. Some of the smaller counties that were having an issue with it, the way the grant is written, you could put in part of the solid waste director's salary, the secretarial salary, all the stuff, and kind of eat that money up. And I'm, my fear is that's what they were doing with it. 
So they were always short on money. Well, we were short on money just dealing with the tires. Uh, and I didn't really see any point in us trying to do that because uh, all of us that are dealing with it on the paperwork and everything else were already getting paid. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's an, another duty and responsibility, but it's just something that's added into our, our current pay. So I don't see trying to charge that through to the dealers or, or you know, own the grant money. Um, if you'll see pages that look like this, I think it says uh, tire disposal. Tire disposal. Yes, thank you. Sure. What I did is ask Nancy to go through, and we went back to uh, July and August. I thought that was enough time for us to look and see what we had doing. Uh, so you can see on the, the first page of that is broken down by columns of where the tires come from. So it gives us an idea of how many tires we pick up at those locations or is brought to us. So we actually picked up tires, or, or tires were delivered to us from Marcus Bryan and Smyrna. And that's, and that's due to them not having a, a tire disposal plan at that their cell. Mm -hmm. Now the, the city of Murfreesboro, the town of Smyrna, the highway department, you know, if in their fleet maintenance facilities, when they have extra tires, they have to bring them to us. They can't take them to the that, That's what that is? Yes. Okay. All right. I, th I thought they were accepting them in turn. Okay. I understand the, that. The, the, we're the, here in Rutherford County, well, all the counties just have one right. entity that deals with tires, and that happens to be us. You can see there's a large number that comes out of the convenience centers. Now, the next two pages or page and a half actually breaks down which centers those are coming from and in the roadside collection, which is our litter crew. You know, when they're out picking up litter, if there's tires on the side of the road, they have to get those as well. Uh, weekly Lane's picking up, a, uh, taking in a bunch of them, aren't they? Yes, sir. On that second page of that, you'll see Oakland written, in, written on there. Mm -hmm. What that is is Oakland High School. And what we do with Oakland High School and Holloway High School is we do occasionally get tires that's still on rims, and we can't ship them that way, and we don't have the equipment to, to take them apart. So we'll take those tires on rims to those two high schools. They have auto mechanics mm -hmm. program. They'll break them down. That's good training for their, their students. If they tear up a rim, it doesn't matter because it's going to be thrown away. And then we pick those tires up, haul the tires back, and get rid of those, and then we leave the rims with them for them to get rid of, you know, they'll sell them for scrap metal. Where I'm thinking we need to go with this to make it easier on the taxpayer is if you're a tire dealer and you send a trailer load of tires, you pay Rutherford County for that load of tires. If you're a resident or a business or anybody else, you bring the tires directly to the landfill and you pay for the tires. Now, if you're a tire dealer dealing with new car tires, there's some money that can come back from, from the DOR if you've paid that money in. When we get that money for your dealership, then you get reimbursed that money. We still don't make anything off of it. All we're doing is making sure we're not left holding the bag. That's placing the burden more on the dealer than it is the citizen. Yes. Used tires are the only commodity to be disposed of that the taxpayers support the business. <clears throat> and the reason for that is back several years ago, there was not an outlet to get rid of tires. So the state had to come up with some way to, to, to get them gone. They were on the side of the road, nowhere yes. else. Mm -hmm. Now, the, so I'm afraid, uh, in the meetings that we had, there was some tire association representatives there and Tennessee out of the 50 states is ranked in the top five on having the fewest illegal tire dumps and the fewest problems with tires. And what happens then is next thing you know, you know this as well as I do, people are like setting those things on fire. Then you got EPA problems, environmental problems, and causing the fire departments out here problems. And they are extremely hard to put out when oh, they're yeah. on fire. But this is not a decision that has to be made tonight. I just want you all to be aware of it. But it will affect what we're going to do in next year's budget. 
So between now and July 1, we're going to need to make a decision on how we're going to proceed with tires. Do you have some idea what you would charge um, just the citizens if they brought in their own? What the, a car tire would be a dollar. Okay. That's you know that's what the predisposal fee is anyway. And on a, a 25 to 27 pound car tire, a dollar covers it. Now on some of the newer vehicles where they've got the 17 to 18 inch wheels and tires, a dollar doesn't cover the disposal. I'm going to ask a question, and when I ask a question, I don't want to, I don't want the smarter commission to think I'm asking them because I'm smarter. But I'm, I'm looking at the numbers weekly. What is the reason why the weekly, and I don't know the numbers here, but you can tell they're, they're larger than the Craner and the Eagle on the roadside and stuff. Why are we getting that many numbers of tires at the convenience centers? Is there dealers down there bringing them in? Yeah. Uh, the way we we're set up through the convenience center situation, if you are a used tire dealer, and you come in in your personal vehicle and you don't have any used tire dealer logos on there, you don't have a uniform on or anything else, and say, hey, I'm, I'm so-and-so and I've got my four tires. We don't have any choice but to take them. So they bring in four tires at a time. Mm -hmm. Some dealers are keeping one person busy. We did a, uh, a count, I think it was about two years ago, Mr. Mayor, if you remember, uh, what we did weekly, we could not get them to, the residents to participate as well as we did at Craner Road in Eagleville. At Eagleville, there was three gentlemen bringing in 41% of those tires. At Craner Road, there was 11 people brought in 37% of the tires. Now, where are they coming from? I don't know if they're buying and selling used cars or I don't know what they're doing. But that's when, when they actually wrote down their name and address and we started tracking it down and counting them up. And I'm sure the same things or a similar thing mm -hmm. is going on at Weekly. And I know I don't want to get the, the, the employees out there as, as in the tire police, basically, because they ain't getting paid enough as it is to enforce this. But is there a mechanism where we where we can put in place to for, to keep that uh, uh, misuse from happening? Almost not, uh, because if you if you just come in and swear up down you're a resident, you know what's the employee going to do? Yeah, but it'd be like somebody bringing in a lot of roof shingles everybody every once a month or a couple times a month. You bring in a tractor. I mean, a trailer full, mm -hmm. you know they're in the roofing business. Right. But the way you can control it is charge for it. Mm -hmm. Most of these people, most of us, when we get tires, we go to a dealer and we buy tires. And you pay the... And, and they, they keep they the old tires and dispose of them for us. And they charge you your dollar or they whatever. They charge you the dollar and a dollar thirty-five and we pay it. So they shouldn't have tires to dispose of. Right. The only large numbers of tires that we're aware of that's still out in Rutherford County are on the old farms. The old farms that used to have the trench silos, you know, they'd dig the trench in the ground and they'd put their silage in there and they'd cover it up with tarps mm -hmm. and then put tires on it to keep the tarps. Some of those old farms would have anywhere from two to 500 tires just to use for weight. Mm -hmm. And some of them still have them, very few. But the way this new legislation is written as well is the cleanup money for use for an illegal tire dump is solely on the landowner. Mm -hmm. So if you own property out in the middle of nowhere and somebody goes in there and they just load you up with tires, they're yours. Yeah. I mean, we have that happen all the time. Call us on highway problems where they dumped them here and there in different places. We tell you we can't pick them up. Yeah, I know when Bart was doing the dump and some trash and all that stuff, he would find a bunch of them. Yeah, but you used to pick them up and take them out too and trail them, but you don't do that anymore. No. We, we have picked up a couple of locations where there were substantial tires our solid waste department has. Yeah. Just to get rid of them. But with the new grant going away, mm -hmm. there's no funding for that. That's just it, it's a problem we're going to have to deal with. Yes, sir. And we just need to figure out how to do what deal with it. I agree that we need to charge per tire, but I do not. Please don't make us collect money at the convenience centers. I think because we have 14 <coughs> centers, some of them out in the middle of nowhere, and if we're collecting any money, we're going to get some center attendant hurt over a few dollars. Right. Well, how would how would you how would you collect the money on this stuff right here? Then they would have to take them to the landfill. Okay. So that attendant out there would refer them to the landfill. Mm -hmm. Is that going to cause them any? Cause them some travel time. I know. I'm talking about the, the the employee, the tenant. It's going to take a little while to get used to. 
and it's something that if, if we were to decide tonight that's what we're going to do and then we need to put up signs get the information out advertise it effective July 1 this is how we deal, deal with it. Tell you, Civil Rivers and Rutherford County take them out there to the landfill, they're going to have a problem. You better believe it. You, probably you, <laughs> and y'all, <laughs> y'all are going to have a big problem. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, the only other thing to do would be set up a center, you know, in those areas, in those areas yeah. to where it's manned and operated with a cashier and not really security, but somebody similar to that. And load up a trailer from that area, and and you know that way we don't have to go as far. But that's you know that's going to be more money, sir. That's the only way you're going to be able to do it. You, I mean, if they go take them out of the landfill, they're going to sling them. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. They're, they're not going to mm -hmm. make it to the landfill. The landfill will be on the side of the road. They're yeah. going to be on the side of the road, yeah. like Commissioner Farley said. They're mm -hmm. going to be slung. That's something we need to put some thought in to decide mm -hmm. what we're going to do when they try to decide oh. something just next to me. I said, I don't think we need this. I think the this third is maybe the next month. Yeah, next month. We, oh, absolutely. I just wanted to. I don't think we need to. We I went to a meeting a week ago Friday and wrong. found out all the information. So that's the reason I, I wanted to send out the letter that we've gotten and then get y'all to where you can make an informed decision. Yes helpful this is good because this is I mean, if, as far as i'm concerned we can wait till if we had to the june meeting to actually make the decision it gives us a little less time to get the word out yeah. could you work with lisa and maybe get put together some numbers of what each scenario would look like a scenario of figuring out a way to take it at the convenience center versus setting up a regional air you know area versus just having to pay the landfill i'm just trying to think of all the options so we can really evaluate what the cost is uh, you're right. The farther away from that landfill, it, 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 it. It, it's not going to make it. And there's going to be districts out here that are going to be tires everywhere, and, and it's going to be more on the north end of the county, and the, maybe the central end of the end of the county. Because the good news is, at least they're being compliant right now. I mean, yeah. for the most part, that that's the, that's what's good. We want to keep the compliance. We just have to I get. Mean, if, if you look on the sheet there, there's. The roadside numbers, that's not a very big number. You think about a thousand miles of county roads that we pick up in a year, that's only about six months, but that's not a huge number. <coughs> that, yeah, that number's going to increase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to lose that top five spot. Is there a centralized location somewhere that, that we can have a couple of days a week where. Like you do the electronics? Now, electronics, you know, of course, is here in Murfreesboro, so I don't think that's. No, but far enough away from the landfill to, to solve the problem. That I was just thinking the same scenario because you right. only set that certain days. I'm wondering about well, electronics is actually every day except Friday and Sunday. Okay. But we advertised initially it was just mm -hmm. certain days. Right. We can look into that. I'll, I'll, what I'm asking for is, is for us to put the thought into it to figure out how we're going to burden the least, the taxpayer, on the, the tax dollars. You know, which ours is sales tax dollars to to fund this program. And what's and your con what's your concern about having them take money at the convenience center? We've got some convenience centers that are literally out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, right and there. if if those convenience centers, because they're some, they're the only person there, and if somebody realizes, hey, there's a couple of hundred bucks out here, I'm gonna knock this lady okay. in the head and take her money. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna get somebody who hurt over nothing. Okay. If you just come up with a plan for us for next month or whatever, when you can get it, and we'll figure, okay. figure it out so one way or another. Okay. okay, this may sound crazy, but it's just an idea that popped up. What if you say no cash, no checks, they have to pay with like a debit card? So it's all electronic transactions. There is no cash. Because you know, I'm just thinking like, with, you know. I mean, there's easy ways to. I have I have convenience center attendants that range anywhere from 34 to 86 years old. Right. Some, of, some of those people won't be able to to do that. Yeah, I just know, like for example, you know, my smartphone with the square, mm -hmm. you know, you can be anywhere right. and take somebody's, you know, take somebody's money. Mm -hmm. I'm not well, saying we yeah. can't do it. What's it's going to be fine? a training issue. What's the fine on uh, getting caught, throwing them over, you know, when mm -hmm. I have to go that way. Yeah, make it so. Well, the hard part with that is is actually catching them. 
I live in the Leanna community and, and, and got a call to the office. Um, there's some tires along uh, Central Valley Road and, and Buckeye Bottom Road and Sulphur Springs Road. And so I went out through there. And literally, the only thing I can figure is they had somebody sitting in the back of the pickup truck with a pickup truck load of tires. And every stop same time they stopped at had three or four tires piled up right there at it. And they went somewhere else. Now, luckily, they didn't just ride down the road slinging them. They, they had them grouped mm -hmm. together, and they were easy to see. But, you know, to catch somebody doing that would be hard. Yeah. Well, I think we even come through that process whenever we talk about the, uh, this has been a while back, as some of you may remember this, the litter, the, the litter ordinance we talked about yeah. a long time ago that, that took forever. I think even that was brought up mm -hmm. in there. And it just, that's going to be hard to, to police. Right. You know. So let's we'll have some creative ideas for you. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. We're going to need on that. Well, you got this problem, but you got another problem that he's going to tell you about. On you just full of problems now, aren't you? All right. The next problem, or not? This was not actually a problem. This was actually a good thing. You should have the information from Ground yeah. Up Recycling. I did stop by there today. They have gotten some shingles, not a whole lot, not near what we need to. But this kind of laid out our plan on how we're going to implement getting that that uh, diversion completed. Uh, right now, if you come out to the landfill with a load of shingles, uh, we'll weigh you in, weigh you out. We'll give you some information on this and ask you to go over there the next time. Uh, we have gotten a little bit of feedback on, I don't like going over there for whatever reason. And then I try to share that with Matt to where if they can fix that reason. Uh, if you've not been there, uh, go in the low jack entrance, you go across the railroad track, you take an immediate left, there's the scales right over here is where you dump. It's all on gravel, fenced in, it's really clean, it's neat. Uh, it should be a, a whole lot easier place to, to dispose of your shingles than the landfill is. Looks like to me, just looking at what I've seen here. You know, so that's, that's just going to be a change in trying to, to get people to understand why we need to do it. We're working with MTSU Communications Department. They're trying to do a public relations uh, plan for Rutherford County Solid Waste. I talked to them earlier this week. Uh, and the professor out there said it's just a huge, huge project. Now, I told her, I said, we've been working on solid waste with a new law since 1991. And it's a huge apple that you can only take a bite out of a time, and we've not even bitten half of it off. So if you can <laughs> get one bite for us, we're happy. Mm -hmm. You know, just to get us a little bit more in the right direction. Which other one would you talk about? Landfill or electronics? Electronics, you're going to tell them about that later. Yeah, that'd be in the convenience center. When you get to your budget, I guess. <laughs> well, no, we'll do it before we get to budget. <laughs> <laughs> but on, uh, we, we've got our permits in place, everything else. We've got to do a uh, meeting with our engineering, county engineers, and then our uh, private contractor on the landfill to build the pond. Uh, we're just waiting on the weather to be more suitable. What we're hoping to do there is catch it right toward the end of spring to where we can be completed and still have grass growing season. Not sure if we're going to be able to pull that off, but that's our goal. Any more questions on the landfill report? I got any more questions on the landfill report? Not motion approved. Motion approved landfill report. Okay. Second. Motion to approve the landfill report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, on the convenience center report, of course, we're, our activities increased just a little bit, but not a lot. You know, the weather's been hampering us. Uh, yesterday, of course, most of you experienced that as well. It was not a, a fun day for any of us. Uh, we thought the weather was going to move in late Sunday night. So I sent a text message out to, to everybody involved, and even included the mayor, so we'd know what our game plan was. You know, if it's bad weather early, we'll just start late. Come in late, get started. Well, when everybody got up, got ready to go, it wasn't bad weather. So we came in, we got started. <coughs> uh, we got two loads actually dumped at the landfill, and the rest of them, when we finally got back to the yard, it got slick after we got out there. Uh, so we brought the trucks in, everybody went home. Uh, Middle Point actually closed early. They closed at 9, our landfill closed at 9. Uh, 
Uh, so we don't have weather conditions like that often. Uh, luckily, it's not. It was on a Monday when convenience centers are closed anyway, so it really didn't affect the operation of the centers. Uh, we had game plan for it just a little bit. The driver on call for the weekend knew that it was a possibility, so we ran the weekend as if Monday, yesterday would have been a holiday, trying to gear up to where we could open the centers on Tuesday without running it all on Monday, and that's wound up with what happened to us. So we were geared up, and it's it's going to be a struggle the next couple of days to get caught up, but but we'll be okay there. The, the convenience centers are, are still running well. Uh, recycle rates are pretty good. This one's actually not a convenience center item, but it is a Haley Road issue. Uh, it's in a totally separate budget, but uh, we started collection collection of electronics at Haley Road about four years ago. Christmas fell in the middle of the week, so on Saturday we decided to open up and collect the electronics, mainly televisions. You know, that's when people would like get a lot of them. We honestly thought that we collect televisions for two or three years or two or three months and we would have every TV collected. We'd be out of the TV business. The reason we started that is the TDEC household hazardous waste events have pushed us into that. They don't collect electronics anymore, they don't collect paint anymore. And they're in an effort to where we would be our own household hazardous waste collection facility, which we don't want to do that yet. But when we started that, we checked with several different vendors to see where we could go and what we could do. Everybody wanted to charge for televisions, everybody wanted to charge for computer monitors, and then pay us for the rest. We run 70% televisions, so we would wind up paying a whole lot more than we received. So we had one company that were based in Woodbury, they moved to Morrison now, but they said we'll do it at no charge. We'll provide the trailer, we'll provide the, the pallets, everything else. Uh, you load us by our trailer, we'll come get it. We won't pay you anything, you don't pay us anything. The only thing we ask is if there's a cord missing off the television or off the computer monitor, we want you to charge $5. And what they were doing with it is they were actually plugging them up to see if they worked. If they worked, they'd send them to Texas and they'd reuse them in the gaming industry. Uh, he got hard up and one day he's still in business, but we had too much for him to do. So we talk, we still talk regularly now but he just decided it's best for us to part ways because he couldn't do it at no charge anymore. And he had promised that he wouldn't charge us, so he thought it's best to go to not do us at all. Uh, Scott Recycling out of Knoxville contacted them, let them know what was going on. They said, yes, we can take your stuff for free. Same deal. So we've been doing that for a while. Well, I got a call a couple of weeks ago. We need to start charging for televisions. I said, well, it's a good time to call because we're coming into budget season and all that kind of stuff. We'll have to... If we're going to have to pay anything, we're going to have to put it out for bids. And he understands that, so he's going to wait for the bid process to go through its, all the measures and get a bid awarded before he actually charges us if he gets the contract. But with the amount of televisions that we're doing, and I asked him to, a price because I didn't know, he said it'd be somewhere between 15 and 20 cents per pound for the televisions. So we're looking at somewhere around $150,000 per year to pay for disposal of televisions and monitors. That's based off his number, not right. necessarily somebody else's. Right. Translate that to an average TV. I don't know how much an average TV is. The television in, in my office is about this wide and about this tall and weighs about 60 pounds. So at 15 cents a pound, that'd be $9. Now, to make it easier on our attendance down there, I, if we have to start charging, I think it should be you know, this range is X, this range is what we don't need to get into four dollars and fifteen cents and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, fives and tens and fifteens or, or something like, to that nature. We still get a world of the old console televisions, mm -hmm. the old big pieces of furniture that mm -hmm. we probably all had at home when we were children. Uh, what we were doing with that with the old company, uh, we were actually breaking them down, taking electronics out of them because that wooden cabinet is, is your weight except mm -hmm. for the tube. So we would have to look at, in those instances, would it save us enough money to pay the labor to actually break those things down? And then the other hard part of it, once you break it down, you have the tube that you have to get packaged to ship without breaking it. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not easy to do. So when we changed vendors, we didn't mention that we used to break them down, we just load them up and send them. Uh, what, what the number I did get from them, our, our lowest trailer 
had 10,000 pounds of televisions. Our highest trailer had 13,000 pounds of televisions. And we shipped either 72 or 74 semi-loads last year. And depending on where you live, you run into the same problem with the tires. If we charge too much, people are just going to say, there's a ditch. Right. Well, and then the, the other thing that we hmm. trying to do the right thing that may have bit us, you know, occasionally that happens to you. When we started electronics collection, we didn't have a fee that we had to pay. He wanted all the electronics that he could get. So we didn't care who you were, where you're from, you bring your electronics, we we'll would take it. Yeah. So it's business, commercial, residential, in a county, out of county, did not matter. You know, so we also have to look at how we're gonna deal with that. Uh, do, do you know how much of that traffic with those televisions, did we actually keep record of that, of how many, how much of that is actually coming from out of the county? No. Because I'm wondering, you know, if half of that is out of the county, you know, we need, we should ding them pretty hard mm -hmm. before we hit any of, any of our people. Or refuse. Or refuse, yeah, I mean, either one. I'm just saying if we're raising revenue, like you mentioned, don't hit our people. Mm -hmm. And see, our goal, which is going to wind up biting us now, was to, to have a place for you to dispose it. Sure. Yeah, I just would be curious to know the number about how many people are actually coming from driving right across from Bedford or Cannon or wherever I'm, and just I'm saying we're dumping the TVs. I've company today and they ask for a item count. Yeah. You know, how, many how many items do you put yeah. on a trailer? We don't have a clue. Right. We've never tried to count them. We didn't have a reason to. You know, so that's something we may have to do well, and get the, ready for the beat. Yeah, we probably need to think about that moving forward, some sort of do you know recording they do system. In Davidson or Williamson County? I do not. Uh, I have been told that Williamson County throws theirs away. I don't believe that. I'd be but surprised. I, I would be shocked if that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe you could look into that too when mm -hmm. you make a recommendation. Because I know, like, there's a lot of people who will want to do the right thing. Like, you know, I, I would bring you my TV in ten dollars. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't think twice about it. You know, there's a lot to they complain about it. There's yeah. a lot to drive off with them. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure we wind up picking them up on the side of the road somewhere. Yeah, that's yeah. Now the the real estate people marks the 22nd down on Butler Drive somewhere. They're having electronics collection mm -hmm. day. I don't know if you saw that in the paper, but if you notice on the very bottom, they're charging for televisions. You know, in most places, if you you try to get rid of them, do charge. Mm -hmm. So that's. Another issue that doesn't have to be decided tonight, mm -hmm. but we need to try to figure out what direction we're going to go. Does Best Buy or anybody like that have any kind of a program? Because I know years ago when I had an old computer, it wasn't Best Buy, but it was, there was another computer, whoever. And so when I took my old one in, I remember I had to pay them, but I was just glad to get rid of it because mm -hmm. I didn't. I knew I didn't want to throw it away, right. you know. So um, does it, I wonder if anybody like that has any kind of a program. There's there's some of those programs out there, and of course, you know the the depends on what kind of monitor you have. Mm -hmm. Some of those have a value to them. Some of them are expense. The leaded glass is the big expense. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just it's so hard to get rid of, mm -hmm. and that's part of the reason of five dollars per cord is is we were collecting that money and giving it. But we were just a pass through for us, giving it to them to help to defer the disposal cost on that on the leaded glass. Now he's in the research development stuff, and he's been doing it for four years. He is—it's pretty neat process. He crushes up the glass and uses it for aggregate and concrete for stepping stones and things like that. So when the light shines on it at night, it, it kind of reflects. Yeah, it kind of glitters a little bit. Hmm. Uh, the testing—they're still doing a lot of testing because they're not sure what's going to happen with the leaded glass. Is the lead going to stay in the glass or is it going to leach out? Whatever, they, and they don't know the answer to that. So that's the reason it's not on the market yet. Kind of like lead bullets at the fire ranges and stuff. It's it's an EPA issue, mm -hmm. just like a lot of other yeah. things. And it's about how I have on the report for the convenience center. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made and second approved. We'll sign two reports. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now for the fun part. <laughs> what we're looking at tonight is, is Solid Waste Sanitation Fund 116. It's actually five budgets. Uh, hopefully they got that on your iPads. I don't know. Hang on a Landfill operations first one on their iPads. Oh, it's not. I'm sorry. 
Yeah. No, it's sanitation. Yeah, there we go. Sanitation education. Got it. Okay, that, that's a one-page budget. What's in that budget is the uh, recycle educator coordinator and the litter crews. We've got one full-time litter crew driver and a part-time litter crew driver, and then we've got Ms. Keesling that does the, the education in the recycle coordination. Let me ask a question. The laborers, is that the, is that the tenants at the convenience centers? No, not in this budget. Okay, all right. This is your litter crew guys and Ms. Keesling and then the funding that supports what they do. Okay. And 149 is one driver. Okay. <coughs> Are you looking at 55739? I'm looking at 55720. Five, five, okay. I shuffled yours like a deck of cards. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but if you if you notice on there, there's really not any changes other than the salaries and benefits. The rest of it's pretty much the same as it was or is for this year. If there's no questions, I'm going to make a motion we approve it and send it to the budget committee. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the next budget, if you run in order, would be 55732 convenience centers. All right, which one of them are the, so the laborers at the tenants? Yes. Oh, yeah, 149, that's 40, 40 part time people. How much of those do they make an hour? In this budget is a uh, 25 cent per hour increase. So currently they're making nine. We're asking for them in next year's budget to make nine dollars and 25 cents. Few of them make more than anything, but that's that's a typical. Is it? Well, we've got very few of them that's been there for a long time. Yeah. I if you, I'd like to see it increased. And others is out there in that weather. And mm -hmm. Yeah. That's our, just me personally. I oh, I agree, hundred percent. Our, our neighboring county to the north pays ten dollars an hour and has been for quite some time. I don't think they've got any raises. But uh, well, our, our goal is to get them to 10, and at the rate we're going, it'll take three more budget cycles to get us there. Well, I'll, I'll say this. I mean, and that's the reason I brought it up. Uh, how many of them do we have of making $10 an hour? Six or seven out of 40. I think that's right, isn't it, Mr. Mayor? I don't know. I was thinking a few more than that. But anyway, is it? We, about three or four years ago, we gave them we sort of adjusted this and pulled them on up as more than 25. Some of them got 50 to 75. So we've been routinely adding another 25 cents every year for the last three or four. But uh, on those individuals that are making above 10, if you slide over on far enough over to the right to see their birthday, they're probably not going to work for us a whole lot longer. You know, just age is going to catch up with them. What kind of cost you you looked at it if you raised them all up at once? No, sir, we have not looked at that. Well, we've got you've got a ten thousand dollar increase right here with the with the twenty five cents. Hmm. So another twenty five is another ten thousand dollars. So that's about two and a half percent increase, and that's about what we've been doing for them routinely, and that's all we're doing for our other people. Step increases are. Less than two percent mm -hmm. for all of our employees. <clears throat> if you look at line item three hundred two advertising, we requested more money in that because we are working with MTSU on the public relations campaign. If they come up with some good ideas, we'll need some money for advertising money to get that word out. Yeah. That's that's the reason for that. The line items are staying pretty much the same until you get the line item 450. And that's tires and tubes. Most of all that is for the garbage trucks. And we had, you know, bid not long ago and it's gone up just a little bit. So we're asking for five thousand more dollars there for tires and tubes. As you can see, six months into it we spent fifty two thousand dollars. And then the next one would be line item seven eighteen motor vehicles that's requesting two roll-off trucks.
So it's basically a hundred that's less than a hundred thousand dollars in it. Mm -hmm. Increase. What eighty thousand, something like that, roughly. Could we get by with just one of the trucks and use some of that money to You're increase right. the pay a little bit more? Of course, it's more than the ten thousand dollars. You've got the uh, insurance. Yeah. No, they, the they don't have they don't get any of those no, benefits. They just get straight pay. They don't get holiday pay. Nothing. But they get Social Security, and Medicare. That those well, yes. have to be on there. They do to get that. To answer your question, uh, right now we've got a fleet of nineteen trucks. So if we replace one a year for every year, I hope this truck's going to be 19 years old by the time we get it replaced. Industry standard, somewhere between 10 and 12. We've got one older, well, we've got several older trucks. We've got one of them has got 596,000 miles on it, but it's ready to all crash tonight if we want to go. Start slipping backwards on it, then you ain't careful, you'd be doubling up down the road. We're in that situation right now on fire engines. So, oh. Mike, you, you know the needs of your department more than anybody. So, if, if we left that decision up to you to do a truck or to do salaries, what would you recommend? That's a hard decision. Uh, well, they're both important. My, yeah, they are. And, and my, to answer it right off the cuff, I would take the salaries. Now, once you put the salaries in there, you're going to have to fund them every year. Right. We're not going to ask for two new trucks every year. Right. You know, the, the game plan is to ask for, to have one and then maybe two. You now we just, this past budget year, we got a new front loader truck, so we should be okay on front loader trucks. Mm -hmm. That's, well, that $250,000 was one truck. That rollover truck could also probably cost you at least $10,000 or more in, in maintenance costs and operation costs if it's bad enough to be needed to replace now. Well, that's true. <laughs> So you pay it here or pay it here. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to throw a motion out there on the salaries on the convenience center. Uh, I'll make a motion to up it a dollar. <clears throat> if, it, if that's reasonable. In, instead mean. of 25 cents? Yeah. Okay, what that would do was if, if we do that, right now the, they're at nine. So we would get them to 10, and that's been our goal. Instead of the 25, they'd get a whole dollar. Now, what about the ones that are already at 10? Do they get a raise? or? I think they have to. Yeah. Give them all the same if you do something like right. that. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to recommend it to the budget committee. Y'all can do what you want to. Yeah. Well, that's okay. That's, that's that's we we found some of the guys. Yeah. 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 I, I, I say mm -hmm. for discussion. Mm -hmm. Want any more discussion on it? Mayor, what did you say about the budget committee? Uh, I, I, won't, I won't agree with that rec when I make my recommendation. Okay. You've got to fund $100,000 in tire disposal. You've got to fund $150,000 electronics. We're going to get solid waste budget, and the whole cannot handle this continued uh, increases like that. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I'm concerned about the 100 plus the 150. Right. Yeah. We, it's not like we haven't been giving these people something every year, and they appreciate it, and, and they tell me. So I, I think we've been reasonably attentive to those. So, and there are other part-time people <laughs> that will think they deserve the same thing, but I don't know whether that would be the case or not. So. Well, and after a year of the tire and the electronics, we'll probably have a better gauge of exactly where we're going to get hit for next year and, cons and be able to consider it, I think, a little bit stronger next year after we know a little bit of what we're going to get from the tire changes and the electronic changes, that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. well, we've got a motion to second on the floor here. Call Roco. Call Roco. Commissioner Allen? No. Commissioner Black? Yes. Commissioner Farley? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? No. Commissioner Turner? No. 
Commissioner Jernigan. Yes. Four yes, three no. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve the budget as presented. Second. Motion made and seven approved. As presented with the amendment yes. on the salaries. Mm -hmm. You got anything else to add, Matt? Not on this budget. We've still got more budgets to do. I'm talking about this, this one right here now. the budget as presented with the amendment on the salaries yes yes commissioner farley yes commissioner serino yes commissioner stevens no commissioner turner no commissioner jernigan yes the next budget is other waste collections five five seven three nine that's basically our recycle effort budget what number did you say that five five seven three nine. Far enough. Okay. this is mostly our Haley Road operation we've got one full-time employee down there and we've got four to six part-time employees only their college kids so we have to work around their schedules the only change in that budget would be uh, line 312. We went from $5,000 to $150,000 to budget to pay for the electronics if we have to do that. Okay, anybody want to make a motion approved? And what's that 150 based on? I mean, it's the 15 to 20 cents per pound for the number of television we have, and, and so we don't know what that we don't know what this number is going to be. That's just a, a kind of a close guess. Gotcha. No, we'll make a motion on it. Well, we're going to have to pay for the TVs. They got, no got no choice. I'll make a motion. We'll approve the budget. I'll second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The next budget is the landfill operation and maintenance budget 55754. Five, Most of the line items are, are the same as this year. Uh, line item 321 is a $10,000 increase. That's for engineering services. That's for the engineering group that we have working with us on the issues that we've been trying to address. Line item 359 disposal fees goes up a hundred thousand dollars. That's the tire issue that we've talked about. And then line item 499 actually gets a decrease. That's the only changes in that budget. Need a motion. Need a motion to approve. Second. Made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh. And the next budget is post closure care cost 55770. The only change in there is line item 366 contracts with post closure care decreases $30,000. Why, why is that? We've gotten most of the issues taken care of out there, and what that line item would be is for specialty contractors. Uh, the only one that I think of that I know of that we're going to need may fall in this year budget could go into next year is the sediment pond to put in the down with the outlet structure and all that kind of stuff that's other because we had money in there to dig the wells and all that kind of stuff which we've already done I know somebody wants to make a motion on bench to decrease y'all make a motion <laughs> <laughs> I second motion made and second 
All in favor? Aye. And if you look at the uh, revenue estimate worksheet, I got the finance department to do that for us to where we can look at the possible revenue funding for the, this budget. And it shows your sales tax dollars, tipping fees, host fees, recycle, sell them, recycle materials, uh, <coughs> grants. And then the, the waste hire program, we think we're going to, if everybody does plays nice, we think we should collect $200,000 in that pre disposal fee. Hopefully it's more than that. How much was the total budget when you add up all of those five areas? Four. Back, but it's, this year it's 4.2 million. I think it was more than that. No, it's 4.4 4. 4 million 208,265. That sounded about right. It's 4 million 426,000. Current year, okay, I'm sorry. 4 million 426,935. So most of that jump is the feet, the, the tire, and the, the electronics. And the electronics, yes. So how much is left in the fund balance? A little less than four million. It's four point four million is this budget. You can see his revenue projection is three point four. Yeah. We're going to use down a million dollars of his fund balance. I, it's he hasn't got many more years at that rate before we have to put some property tax into solid waste. Getting on the borderline there. So I mean that's that's the reason I we got to be very frugal and prudent here. And I thought we said the other night at Public Safety that we couldn't use property tax for Not solid cool. waste. We could, but we hadn't done it. We not. We don't have it in there. I don't know if you may be right about that. Anyway. You used to, the, prop, the we, solid waste department did get property tax dollars, but the fund balance was extremely high. So the decision, and it was the right decision, was made to take the property tax dollars out and make them spend part of the fund balance to get the fund balance down. Or, or put more of sales tax into this. You know, he's going to have to divert some new money into his budget. It seems like we ought to do years. that incrementally instead of having to find two or three million dollars at one time. Well, but if we don't get a recycle program up and running and everything else in 10 or 15 years, you're looking at putting millions of dollars into this budget from somewhere. We have to haul waste to another location. How's our revenue looking for the year? Is it above? Is it we don't know yet. Actually, we don't. Oh, long we've got a landfill out there. Property tax out. revenue we're will be, be probably flat at best. We're going to be doing the best we can do with that. The only thing you can do. Any other questions for me? I just had one more statement. Anything? I brought it up in Health and Ed the other night with Commissioner Allen and Serena were there to try to put some pressure on some of the school board and the school system leaders to make sure that they're helping you with the recycle efforts that we're trying to do in the schools just to drive that home with the children and then they take that home and the parents start becoming acclimated to that and they were saying the same thing that you were I mean it's tough breaking a habit sometimes but they seemed on board with it so you know use some of that leverage to you know we'll keep trying to to push that as a positive program which it obviously is for the county but uh, they seem to be engaged in that too so you know keep working with them on whatever we can do on public works to make sure you know that, that we're supporting you the right way but also health and education that we're pushing them to make sure that that program really gets a foothold there what do we always send resolutions to our state legislature why don't we send a resolution to the school board yeah. and endorsing that concept that way they've got it all we got all 21 commissioners yeah on board with on board it. with it i know one of the challenges that director odom said they had the other day was not from the school system so much as from the communities around those schools yeah. misuse of those um of those containers they were ended up with garbage and all kinds of other things in there so. that's what they make locks for i know this is what i said <laughs> so they're gonna have to figure out some way to you know try to help control that We've looked at different options on that. I think to buy a lock bar for there's 276 dumpsters in the county that we service, and there's a locking me mechanism that would actually weld to the container that would have a rod that goes across the top of the lids to where you can't open them unless you unlock it. 
the way that thing is also designed is once the garbage truck sticks its forks in it and tilts it at about a 30 degree angle, it automatically unlocks. So he can dump it. He doesn't have to get out and unlock it. Gotcha. And then you'd also have to buy the locks and then the little locks for each side. Uh, we're thinking it's somewhere in the neighborhood of $15,000 to lock every dumpster in the county. I'm not opposed to that. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm not is if Commissioner Farley is the principal at Farley High School, mm -hmm. I can put the locks on his dumpster and say, Mr. Farley, here's your key. You are now responsible for everything that's in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't even have a key to it. Gotcha. Uh, I'm not opposed to doing that. Okay. So that would be a conversation we mm -hmm. need to have with the with well, Central Mr. Clark office. indicated that I don't know whether they, we do have some locking me mechanisms on all of these, and uh, he made a point the other night at the Health and Ed Committee meeting that they are making a substantial effort to mm -hmm. keep those. And they are trying really hard to do that, but mm -hmm. what they're doing is they're taking a regular log chain mm -hmm. and going around the front of the dumpster, hooking into the lid, hooking into the handle in the door, and then going over the top. And what they do when they un unlock that, they leave that dump, that chain hanging. Mm -hmm. And when we dump that with the truck, that or chain now chain. wraps around the mirrors and everything yeah. else. So you've got to be real care <laughs> careful when you dump it, you'll tear the truck up. So. Yeah. And you got operational costs, you got workers' mm -hmm. comp. Issues or something was happening. You know, so the lock bar is is the is the way to go. I mean, it's something that's designed to do just that what job. we wanted to do. Yeah. Well, I just wanted you to know you have allies and up I there was to watching try to. I, when you said that, okay, yeah, if I'd had your personal number, I would have called you and said yeah. thanks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, that's all right. Why don't we send a resolution to the school board? And I make that motion that we send a resolution to the school board endorsing the concept of recycling in our school systems. Yeah, I'll second second the motion. I don't understand the motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Now, you got the grant application. We're a little ahead of the ball game on this one, but it's usually we're running behind times. This is the litter grant, and it's for the county litter grant to pick up the county roads. Uh, if you Look on that funding mechanism. It shows ninety-five thousand one hundred dollars. That's what this grant is. If you go down to the bottom, it shows a state road contract. We've always, in the past, called that another litter grant. It's not a grant. It's actually a contract that the county has with the CDOT to pick up the state roads. So this resolution would approve for us to apply and Mr. Mayor to receive. Uh, we think we don't even know what it's going to be. We think it's going to be the same money as it was last year, ninety-five thousand. Year read, before that was one hundred ten. I read the res resolution authorizing submission of an application for a litter and trash collection grant on the county road from the Tennessee Department of Transportation, authorizing the acceptance of said grant. Whereas Rutherford County intends to apply for the automation grant. Tennessee Department of Transportation to be executed from July 1, 2014 to June 30, 2015. And where is the contract for the grant will impose certain legal obligations upon Rutherford County. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the county mayor of Rutherford County is authorized to apply on behalf of Rutherford County for a litter and trash collection grant for county roads from the Tennessee Department of Transportation and that said an application be approved by the Tennessee Department of Transportation. The county mayor is hereby authorized to execute contract or other necessary documents which may be required to signify acceptance of the litter and trash collection grant by Rutherford County. Resolved. This uh, Two thousand fourteen. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any other questions? Keep up the good work, Mike. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Mike. Did it help any getting the information a little yeah. bit ahead of time? Yeah. yeah, it always that can never be yeah, overstated. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. So thank you for that. Appreciate what you do out there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I've got a, a, a really good crew that I work with. All right. And it's, it's them, not me. Yeah. And that, just so I can tell you, just the no vote for me on the salaries has nothing to do with 
any kind of lack of appreciation for what they do. Oh, I understand. I just know, I mean, I, I, we own a business, and I know what it's like to make payroll, and, you know, when you got, you, it's like a water balloon, you know, you squeeze on one side, the other side blows up, you, right. squeeze, you know, there's only so much you can do, so, um, but yeah, so, tell them we, we do appreciate them. Okay. Thanks, Mac. Thank you. But even with the no vote, there's still a vote for 25 cents. That's right. Right, That's right. sure. You got to look at the bottom. Well. <laughs> we've, got a, we've got a resolution here. Uh, you, want me, you want me to describe this? A yeah, bit? go ahead. Uh, what you've got here, we've received a letter from a lady that represents the Tennessee American Gold Star Mothers. These are mothers that have lost uh, children in uh, conflict. And what they want to do. They have picked State Highway, State Route 1, which runs across 23 counties in Tennessee. Every time you come into a county and leave a county, they want to sign up. It basically says, uh, what did she say? Gold, Gold Star, Star Families Family. Memorial Highway honoring our fallen heroes. And if she gets this passed through the state legislature, the state will put, TDOT will put the signs up. It'll be each county's responsibility to to pay for two signs at $162.50 each. So this is just a resolution that we would ask the commission to approve and if we'd send it on to the state legislative group and if they pass all of this, then they put these signs up, but we'd have to pay two times 162.50. Let me ask you a question. And I'm trying to think with this, is it gonna cause any problems because the, the date, or can they attach it to another uh, well, bill up there? I think they've already got a bill floating. Do they? And they just want to support yeah, the, the counties, okay. counties before they decide if they're going to pass the bill. I just didn't want it to fall through cracks. And, yeah. You know, I, I, we, we need to honor our heroes, and I make that motion, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Say second, yeah. Hey, we got a motion and a second. Approve this. We got to honor our heroes on this. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Does this go to budget because it's got money? We got, it's got we're doing it yeah. from this committee. Yeah, we got a little bit of money that's taken on the budget. Yeah. I really probably didn't have no report this month on that and so. Anybody got any other bid? All right, I'll move with Johnson. 